yesterday it was so cool. I, I was getting ready to do a breakout session and uh, Christina said to me, Pam, I want you to meet this student that is troubleshooting our new intensive reading course. And I said, cool, I'll be at room blah, we split it at 1.30 and I walked in and I met him and I asked him a couple questions. I said, would you, would you like to talk to the people in this room when they show up in this breakout session? And Caleb said, sure. And so for the next hour, and you know if you were in there, for the next hour, our teachers asked uh, Caleb questions and he answered them. So what I thought we would do uh, this afternoon, I want to introduce you to Caleb. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Caleb drove here yesterday for over an hour and he drove back today for over an hour. We called him last night and he said, sure, I'll come on back. And what we thought we would do is take a couple of the questions that people asked in, actually asked in the room yesterday and that um, Don and Christina would ask those questions and give Caleb an opportunity to answer. So here we go. Okay, this is definitely the condensed test, test. version. Yeah. But we'll start with the question, Caleb, of what do you like best about Florida Virtual School? Uh, you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, no, but it, it really is, it's, it's the dynamic learning environment provided by the teachers. Um, it's the ability to get to know someone. It's the ability to be in an environment that's always changing and always progressing. Um, and that's because of you guys. Um, you know, the, the management team can say try this idea but if no one wants to try it nothing's gonna happen and so you know just all of the teachers who work so hard to help their students and to um, to work with their students to help them navigate through their education and through Florida Virtual School. So if that's what you like what might you change? Um, well, there, there's a, there's a lot of little things, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I have my opinions, but primarily, um, just, not so much change is, but encourage, because I have, I've had wonderful, amazing teachers, Miss Forrest being one of them. And then I've had teachers who are great, but they aren't a virtual teacher. They aren't dynamic and engaging enough in a virtual setting. And you know, that could be personality, but it could also just be, you've got to get to know your students. You've got to take that extra five minutes when you're on the phone with them to ask them how they're doing. You've got to go that extra little bit to kind of just get involved with them because that'll make all the difference and that'll make them um, want to work for you. And yeah, so just if I would change anything, it would just be that every teacher would take every opportunity to get to know their students better. And I'll give you your 20 after. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you kind of said this, but if you could give some specific indicators of what makes a teacher a great teacher at Florida Virtual, you said get to know your students, take the five minutes, but could you give any specifics of, of some instances that would, for someone who's going like, what do, what do they, what do they want to tell me about themselves or what should I ask them? Right. Well, your students, I guess attention is being fragmented. Um, in, in about 1,500 ways. I, I put up my schedule the other day so that I knew what I had going on and it looked like a rainbow with all the different colors of all the different things that I have to do. And it, it's hard to realize, but your students are busy. Your students do not sit down every day and say, hmm, I'm bored. I'm going to do Florida Virtual School. That's great. You know, because they don't, one, it's school, and two, 
there's Xbox, there's friends, there's you know, a physical teacher, there's all sorts of things that are going on that are going to take precedence automatically. And so I've had teachers, I had a teacher ask me last year, I was enrolled in a biology course, and I was doing a monthly call slash oral assessment with my instructor. And she said, so what's going on with you? What are you doing this weekend? It was a Friday, she wanted to know what I was doing. And I said, oh, I'm going to a concert. Uh, it was my 16th birthday, and so I was going to go to a rock concert. Lots of fun. But <laughs> lots of pyro and great fire, and it was great. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it just really, it really struck me that she actually cared what I was doing. And then the next week, you know, my little IM box pops up maybe on Thursday of the next week. How was the concert? Oh my goodness. I mean, for the, one, for her to even ask what I was doing, but for her to remember and to come back to me and say, how was it, was just very impactful. And then, you know, later on when I had something come up or something that I needed to tell her, I felt like I could approach her. I felt like I could talk to her. And I felt like she wasn't going to treat me as a number, another number. She wasn't going to treat me as another completion or another credit. I knew that she was going to treat me as a student that she wanted to help succeed. Okay, we didn't agree on this question, but I have to take you back there. All right, yesterday you talked about the teachers that made you want to work for them, and you talked about a certain emotion that they were able to pull out from you, um, and you shared a story about p other people who made you feel that way. Can you share that story now? Sure. Uh, well, your students never see you. I think I am one of very few students that has actually gotten to meet more than one of my teachers, <laughs> and that's only because I'm here. Um, I, Ms. Forrest was my teacher three years ago. Yesterday was the first time I've actually met her. Um, but she's been so impactful to me. I seriously considered not taking a Florida virtual course this year. And she encouraged me and inspired me to keep going. And it's because she fostered a sense of my responsibility to her. She earned my respect. She earned my trust by caring about me. Um, everybody has their grandparents. I would say for most people your grandparents are the one people, the one um, group that you do not want to disappoint ever. And that's because you know they love and care about you more than anyone else. Uh, I will disappoint my parents. I'm <laughs> I'm sure that before I left the house this morning, I probably did 10 different things that disappointed someone. <laughs> um, and, and, and that's not to say that my parents don't love me or that, but, but your kids do things that frustrate you. Like, grandparents don't show that. Grandparents strive to love you unconditionally in everything that you do, and you have to love your students unconditionally in everything that they do. They're not going to return your calls. They're going to delete your emails. And you're really going to think, they don't care, why should I? And you should care because you're a teacher. That's what you like to do. Um, I would hope. Um, so you have, to, you have to create a relationship with your students where they don't want to disappoint you. You have to love them in the sense that makes them feel that they want to love and respect you so that they, it would be detrimental to them to go against you and to ignore you and to delete your emails and to close that little I am box and go offline and please don't bother me anymore. I'm sick of it. <laughs> and, and so it's, you know, I said yesterday, it was just that, that love and that genuine care that made all the difference. Okay. All right, and finally, because you've kind of answered the questions that we would have asked you as we've gone along anyways, <laughs> but <clears throat> if you were going to like give a charge from a student perspective to all of the teachers in this room and even the instructional managers and working with new teachers, 
what would you give as maybe one, like, go out and do it kind of thing to be a great teacher with Florida Virtual School? Stop. Um, that's one word. But don't stop doing what you're doing. Don't stop being amazing, awesome, wonderful teachers. Don't stop teaching. Stop running. Take that 30 seconds, that 5 minutes, that 10 minutes if it takes it, and get to know each other, get to know your students, and just stop and take a second. You have, what, I heard the numbers anywhere from 50 to 150 students? That's a lot. Um, I have four teachers, two of them are Florida virtual teachers. I have enough trouble keeping up with them. Um, but stop and take that extra minute. It's not going to kill you. Um, I hope. If it does, talk to them. It's not my fault. <laughs> but, you know, I, I haven't seen any shock callers this week. I, I've heard tales, but, you know, I hope they wouldn't be used. But, but just take that extra minute and talk to your students. Talk to your employees. Talk to your instructional leaders, instructional leaders, talk to your teachers. We live in an age and in a society where communication is overwhelming. Attention fragmenting communication. <laughs> but if we, if we use that and if we take maybe what can be a detriment and use it to our advantage, it, we're going to go somewhere. Florida Virtual School is going to be at the top. But if everybody keeps going, you're going to drive right past uh, the top and go all the way to the bottom because you're going to miss it. You're going to miss your students. You're going to miss each other. And you're going to miss the opportunities that you guys have. And it, it's just amazing. as an encore about what you talked about illuminate, how you love that kind of stuff? Sure. Okay, um, a little birdie uh, landed on my shoulder and uh, wanted me to mention something that I talked about yesterday that I didn't hit was the illuminate sessions. I personally love the product. Uh, using it as a student, I and I'm not sure if I want to admit this or not, but I have an Illuminate V Room personally. Uh, for I've used it for collaboration with friends and things on projects. But I have been in two or three courses where Illuminate has been utilized by the instructors teaming up with other classes to create like crash courses. And we've busted through a module at a time. And that's amazing. That's great. It provides something that you don't get in a virtual school setting. It provides collaboration. It provides direct interaction with both other students and your teacher. You're not going to have every kid I am you. You're not going to have every kid show up and illuminate. But you're at least going to be able to give instruction like you would in a classroom in a virtual setting instead of having the course teach it. Have you teach it, your teachers. Um, not auto grades, not, you know, Illuminate is just, it, it's a great, I, I have always loved it when my teachers have used it because I've gotten to interact with them more, I've gotten to interact with other students more, and I've learned the material better because it rubs students on each other and teachers on students. Um, I think the expression is, as iron sharpens iron, and it makes everyone better for it. Just that collaboration. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? Thank you. Thank you. We have a little gift for you.
Thank you. Sorry for the Don, you don't get to go away. A Catalyst Award for you. Wow. How cool is that? Thank you. Caleb, that is to fragment your attention.